One of my best friends called me today and said, Ryan, I have a bunch of credit card debt on a bunch of different credit cards, but I'm also sitting on some cash and I'd like to pay off some of the credit card debt. What order should I pay the credit cards in? And the conclusion that he had come to was that he thought based on the dollar amounts that he was paying for each credit card each month, he should start off by paying the credit cards that have the largest balances outstanding. And I said, no, 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 I think that you need to pay off the cards that have the highest interest rates and don't even think about the amounts that are left on them in terms of the total cash you owe them, just pay off the ones that have the highest interest rates. This is an example that you could use yourself as well based on your own situation. And this doesn't even have to be for credit cards, it could be any kind of debt. So if you have multiple kinds of debts, which way should you pay it off? So he's got these 10 credit cards. He's got this much outstanding on each one. So he owes this credit card company 3,000. He owes this one 1,100. He owes this one 2,500. And then this is the interest rates that he was paying on each one. So for this first card with the 3,000 amount, he's paying 29% annual interest. So then we can go ahead and just multiply the amount that he owes them uh, by the interest rate on the credit card to figure out how much interest is going to accumulate on this card each year. So for this one, it's 870. And then we can just do that for all of them. And then we'll sum them all up and figure out that if he doesn't pay off his uh, credit card debt, then if, or if it just stays at this value, it's gonna go up, actually, the debt's gonna go up by 6,100 this year. His weighted average interest rate, so if we took the weighted average of all of these values, is about 26.5% that he is paying on this credit card debt. So then he said he's got about 15,000 in cash and he's trying to figure out how to pay these things down. So I set up this little table where basically we can start plugging things in. And so if we went with what he said where you pay down by the ones with the largest amount because those are the ones that he felt was hurting him the most because they feel like the most money going out, then we'd start off with this one, which has 6,000. So we're gonna pay 6,000 down here. You'll notice when I do that, we've paid 6,000 down. Now we have 9,000 remaining, which is the original 15,000 of cash that we started off with, minus 6,000 of cash that we just used to pay off this credit card. Now this credit card has no amount that we owe left. That's the new amount, it is zero, and we're not gonna pay any interest per year anymore because we paid it off, so that would be 0%. So now we'll go to the next one that has the most outstanding, which is 4,400, and we'll pay that off. So that credit card is now done, and there's 4,600 remaining. So now we'll go to the one that has the next highest value, uh, which is 3,100, so let's do that. Boom, and now we've got 1,500 left. Now this one is our next highest one, so let's say we pay off 1,500 of it. We can't do more than that, because now we are out of cash. So now what we've done by paying all this off with the 15,000 is that we have eliminated three of the credit cards and reduced the balance of one. We can see that our total amount of debt now was the original 23,000 and now we're down to 8,000. So we basically took off 15,000 of debt and now we can see our new interest rate is 26.37% on the remaining debt. And we can see that we actually decreased the interest per year that we're gonna pay by this much because we were paying this much per year, now it's this new amount. So that's good, we reduced it by 4,000. So let's take this, uh, a picture of this, and then let's see what happens if we do my method, compare it to this. So this is what he was saying to do, which, you know, I could see why that would make sense in someone's head. So then how about, instead of doing it that way, we actually just pay down the debt by starting at the highest interest rates. So I see this one's at 32%. Let's start off paying that one first. And then let's go off and see this one is the next highest, 30%. So let's pay the 6,000 here to get rid of that credit card. Then let's go find, We see. I see we have a bunch that are all sitting at 29% interest rates. So we can just start paying these off one at a time. It doesn't even matter which one we uh, pay off first. Maybe just make sure we could pay the smallest ones off first just to reduce the amount of mental clutter of having so many uh, credit cards outstanding. I can't even imagine that. So then now we only have 2,900 cash left. This one's 3,000. So let's pay it down just to 
100 remaining on that one. Now, if we compare the results with the other method, we can see that we actually now only have an interest rate, a net interest rate on all of our credit cards of 19.85%, which means that we actually decreased our interest per year by 4,500, which is a noticeable improvement but than the, uh, you know, basically 4,000 doing the other method, which would have left our interest rate much higher. So my conclusion mathematically is that basically you want to pay off the highest interest rates first, which makes uh, intuitive sense, I would think. And then his other question he asked was, hey, I have some stocks. Should I sell the stocks? to pay off these remaining credit cards that I have outstanding, right? Should I sell like the 8,000 worth of stocks to pay these off? And my answer was absolutely, in my opinion, because basically you have a 19.85% interest rate remaining on these credit cards, and that would be an amazing stock return. If I could get an annual stock return of 19.85%, I would consider that a very, very good year. Usually the S&P 500 only returns like 9% or 8%, somewhere around there. So basically paying this off is like almost like a guaranteed return of 19.85%. And if you think of the opportunity cost of it, you're basically, by not selling the stock, you're almost financing this 19 point, uh, this stock by borrowing at 19.85%, which is just crazy. And you know, this is to account for whether or not this stock has been purchased within the last year, because I'm assuming that, you know, it's been purchased more than a year, which was his situation. So you don't really have to worry about the uh, short term tax gains on that. But then I told him, hey, if you really want to keep the stocks, don't don't do it at the expense of this 19.85 percent interest rate you're paying on these. I would sell the stocks, pay this interest off. And then if you want to repurchase those stocks, then what you can do is something smarter which is use margin to rebuy the stocks, which is basically borrowing from a brokerage. And he can get the margin at basically an amount based on this calculator. So let's say he really wanted the 8,000 in stocks. I'll hit there. Then we can see what the rate is, which is 5.83%, which is a much cheaper rate to finance stock purchases at than you would find uh, with uh, keeping your credit cards outstanding. So, uh, if you're interested in this idea of margin and whether that's even worth it, you can check out my next video that's going to pop up at the end here. And if you're curious about these margin rates yourself, I've got a link in the description and the pinned comment that you can click on to check them out. And feel free to download this file with the link in the description. And I hope you guys enjoyed. Feel free to subscribe for more videos just like it. Mm -hmm.